wanted to start this vlog off on like a cute little fun note. It's gonna be informative, but guys, I'm gonna tell y'all some of the worst dating advice that I've ever gotten. I'm gonna have my phone, cause I also sent my family uh, and my friends messages asking them what's some of the worst dating advice that they had, and they chimed in as well. So I'm gonna start first. So one of the worst pieces of dating advice that I was ever given was to get over one person is getting, in order to get over one person is to get under the next person. I took that advice from Wendy Williams. Now, let me say this. I didn't physically get under anybody, but y'all, I started going on a whole bunch of dates. I'm talking about dates, dates, dates. I was dating like crazy. So basically I went through a breakup and I really didn't like try to heal or anything. I just immediately jumped back out there and started dating again because I was listening to Wendy Williams. So I didn't have any time to like heal. So y'all, girl, I started dating. I was down to every every dating website. Now, mind you guys, I hadn't been in the dating, um, I hadn't been dating, like I haven't been, okay, so I had been with the same guy for about three years. And before him, I was with someone. So I really hadn't been single in a while. So I didn't know, you know, like the dating sites and what kind of sites, y'all, I was on Tinder. I was on uh, Hinge, I was on Bumble, I was on all of the websites, so girls, and I was also meeting guys and stuff, like when I would go out, you know, whatever, to the grocery store, just wherever, I was meeting a lot of guys, but anyway, the last straw for me, as far as that dating advice was concerned, is I went on a date with a guy, I told y'all this story already, but anyway, girl, I went on a date with a dude, and y'all, he kicked me on the date it was on accident but he kicked me he had on like these big old house shoes like some big soft moccasins girl that fool kicked me when we was getting out of the booth to leave the date or whatever so i told him i was like you kicked me and he had like a accent like a trinidadian accent he was like no 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 i did it no i did it and i was like yes you did so girl y'all we standing in the middle of pf chains going back and forth about this fool kicking me or whatever so anyway after that i was like i'm fucking done i'm done so I was done with dating for a while after that. So that was probably the first, the worst piece of dating advice. In order to get under one person, in order to get over one person, get under another one. What's the next piece? Okay, this was a terrible piece of dating advice, girls. The dating advice basically is saying, make a guy so dependent on you till he won't be able to live without you. And baby, I took that dating advice and when I tell you, it was the fucking worst. Y'all, I actually did that and it's true. It is true. You can make a guy so dependent on you that he won't be able to do anything without you. Now, this don't mean that he not gonna, you know, cheat or whatever, but I'm saying in terms of like, it makes them, it just made the person that I was with like super freaking lazy. It made him so lazy and so dependent and I literally felt like I was sharing my brain with him and it was the absolute worst. Next piece of awful dating advice that I was given was just go with the flow. Anytime somebody tells you to go with the flow, that means it's really, uh, in my case, I'm gonna say in my case, that just means that there's really no plans for you here, uh, you know, we just gonna go with the flow and typically they just want the flow to go <laughs> down to the bed <laughs> that's what they want you to flow to typically it's down to the bed girl so that is the probably the third worst piece of advice i've gotten was just go with the flow let's see let's let's go with number four so we got go with the flow. Oh, at least he got money. I got a whole lot of money. Yo, Bitches yo, got it for me. So the thing of dating someone just because they have money does not mean that they gonna give you any. I have met and worked with some of the most selfish, well-to-do men that you can imagine. There are some very, very stingy people out here and dating someone just because they have money does not mean that you're gonna directly benefit. And even if you do, let's talk about, even if they do nice things for you, what if it's somebody that just throws shit in your face and won't ever let you live it down? 
You know what I'm saying? And so the whole consensus of a man having money is just not, that's just not, you need to have more redeemable qualities and redeeming qualities than just having money. So it helps, but it's not everything. And it only, it only, it only helps if the man is generous and not vindictive and not want to throw everything in your face every time he does something for you or when you guys have um, an argument and he tells you, you know, all the things that he's done for you or whatever. So anyway, I don't want to be the dead horse on that. Um, girl, this is, oh my God, y'all, this is the worst one right here. Date him because he treat his mama good, y'all. That is the fucking worst. Guys, I've dated someone who treated his mom exceptionally well and did not treat me well and did not treat women well in general. The only woman he treated well was his, was his mama. So just because it's treat, he treats his mom well does not, that does not mean he gonna treat you like that. Let's go to the next one. Having a piece of man is better than having no man at all. Uh, I'm going to replace that with having a pizza man is better than having no man at all because anything, girl, that is the fucking worst. I actually knew someone who felt that way. She literally told me that having a pizza man, because I was telling her like I was dating someone and I was like, yeah, I don't think things are going to work out. He's just not, you know, available in the way that I need him to be. And that's what she told me. And I was like, I hope that's not the mantra in which you are living by having a pizza man is uh, better than having no man at all. So that was the worst advice. And guys, that's really, that's really old fashioned advice. That's some shit from way back in the day. Like, I hope that there is nobody that's, you know, living by that, um, that's living by that. I'm gonna wash my hands, but I just kind of need to uh, get some of this debris off of them first. Okay, let me get some tissue, hold on. Let's go down, let's go to the next one. What's the next one? Make sure you fix his plate before you fix yours. Yours, not yours, yours. That only applies in two circumstances. One, if he does the same thing for you, and two, if he does the same thing for you. That's it. In terms of just slaving and you didn't cook the food, duck the corn, you didn't crack the eggs, bake the cornbread, fry the fish, to mother the chicken, wash the dishes, rock the churns, clean the house, and then you got to fix the plate before you fix yours too? No. If you guys have a relationship where, you know, it, there's a lot of reciprocity there and you do things that make, you know, that y'all make each other lives easier yeah i'm on board with that only if he does the same for you girl you need to give him a chance he got a good job that's the nut that's the next one he got a good job he drive a nice car you need to give him a chance that is the worst advice and the reason why <laughs> <laughs> the reason why that's terrible advice is because, yeah, he might very well have a good job and drive a nice car and live real good, but that don't mean that you guys are going to be compatible. You know what I'm saying? What about compatibility? You know, he probably somebody that don't never freaking smile. Guys, I dated somebody who never smiled. And mind you, he drove a nice car and had a great job. When I tell you this fool never smiled, it literally looked like if he smiled, his face was gonna crack. I had never seen this man smile, laugh. The, the first time I seen him smile is when he was flirting, trying to get with me. And that was it. I never seen him smile again. Like he just didn't have, I don't even think his face had the muscle memory or the, the, the positioning of the muscles in his face that could even fucking form a smile. Like I think that his lips was just permanently a downward banana. You know what a banana look like when you turn that bitch upside down? Bananas normally look like this, girl. Them, them lips was like this. They was like a downward banana. Like no, no, no. So granted a man can have a beautiful job, a beautiful car, a nice home, and he can be the most miserable, angry, just awful person and that's not just for like men that's in general so anyway i thought that was like a cute little way to start the blog but i have a call of action girls so the first thing i want y'all to do is get down to the comment section you guys tell me the worst 
dating advice that you were ever given. And then the second part I want you to do is, did you take the advice? Anyway, okay, let me finish my makeup and stuff and then I'll see you girls when we get in the car. Hey girls, y'all. So guys, we are getting ready to go run some errands. I need to cut this mic on, baby. It's the man over here with the sign for me, sir. Uh, go away from me with this Apollo. Go away from me with this. Okay. So y'all already know I need to stop and get me a frozen coat before we go run these errands. So girl, the bank, I mean, not the bank, I'm sorry, the, um, my apartment complex, hold on, I'm trying to connect the microphone. The, uh, apartment complex is undergoing some type of like software, I'm sorry, a uh, website upgrade or what have you. And so uh, we gotta actually pay our rent uh, via, let me see, cashier's check this month. And so normally they have it where it's super convenient online. But anyway, girls, so y'all, oh, 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 oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Hold on girl, the microphone trying to fall. <laughs> All right, when I tell you, baby, I didn't have a time with this microphone. Okay, girls, let me get a frozen coat because uh, I'm not going to be able to do anything without one. Baby, let me tell y'all something. Baby, I ain't going to tell y'all how life just tried to chew me up, girl. Listen, came down to McDonald's, hit a damn pothole on my way here. Okay. Girl, I'm over it. So after I got my frozen coke and my fries, girl almost got hit by a goddamn rotor rooter truck. Y'all know what a rotor rooter truck is. So girl, the rotor rooter then almost took me out. So I just had to pull over and just get myself together. So that's what's going on with me. But girl, y'all listen. See, I be hating. Okay, I be hating when McDonald's be putting all that salt on these fries. I hate it so bad. I should have asked for some fresh fries with no salt, y'all. I do not like salt on my food. I hate it. I hate salt. But anyway, so, what I was going to tell y'all, I forgot. Mm, mm. I guess, since we're here, we might as well have an episode of Rochelle Lee. I got it. Let's try it and rate this one through 10. I knew I had a big back when I took the rolls from Texas Roadhouse and then brought them to Spring Creek Barbecue in Cyprus just to eat them with this barbecue plate platter and then left and went to H-E-B down 290 just to get Bluebell and then went home. How many of us have that testimony? Okay. This drink is for the thirsty throat goat. I'm not a throat goat, but I am a goat. Greatest of all times, because I'm a Capricorn. So first, it has a very smooth and creamy consistency. And then you're hit with like this very crisp, strong, acidy taste. Then after it settles on your palate for about five seconds, it hits you with an amazing burst of energy. Mm. And then it just delicately coats your tongue with so much creamy and cool goodness. Mm. And after about 10 sips, your mouth explodes with the taste of caffeine and carbonation. Mm. I'm actually going to rate this. I'm going to rate this a 20 out of 10. But anyway, y'all, another, another reason why I feel like life is chewing me up today, because girl, Y'all, why my lace want to play with me? Now, I felt like my lace was laid really, really good before I left. Baby, I didn't got... <laughs> Y'all, I didn't got outside 
Hey, girl. The lace is, it don't look bad, but it's definitely, it's not, it's not, it's not, I've, I've definitely done a better job than this before. You wanna put a ring on my finger? And on a mic and wanna marry me. Put it on a mic and wanna marry me. But anyway, um, I just wanted to call y'all and tell y'all what type of crazy day I'm having. So, I'm finna go to the bank and then I'm gonna go to the store and I might pick you guys up if anything eventful happens in between. Hey girls, we got a new episode of a down to the grocery store. Y'all, the churros was being so bad today. Bitch. I'm here. Laugh. The hell, y'all? They ate me up and had chewed me up in that store. Everybody was crying, girl. Everybody was crying, and then if they wasn't crying, they was just being damn bad. Oh my God, y'all, this one little boy almost hit me with the, the mama basket. She was telling him to like, I guess what he was trying to do was just be helpful. So the basket was pointed like the opposite way down the, down the aisle, but they was gonna go down the aisle that was closest to them. So girl, he took the basket, swung it around, almost hit me. And then she started yelling at him. Oh my God, they was being so I, I never thought that I would hear myself say this and I'm just gonna say it girls today is the first day I can honestly say I'm glad I don't have no insurance girl cuz they was being bad oh my god I'm sorry if anybody if I'm if anybody see me down to the HEB and I'm talking about your insurance but y'all they was being bad as hell today it must be a full moon but anyway girls so we're headed to Trader Joe's I did not take y'all in here with I would have I would have picked y'all up but girl they was being too fucking bad I was like I'm not gonna be able to do it because I did not want to get into it with nobody little eight year old so I was like let me just not pick the camera up but anyway y'all I ran into a bombshell in the parking lot hey Aaliyah if you're watching y'all she was so cute girl y'all we got some bad bombshells when I be seeing you guys out and meeting you guys baby y'all bad hey girls we have an actual up close and personal episode of down to the pool baby the police then came out here <laughs> <laughs> y'all oh my wig not looking crazy y'all why the police then came out here looking for people ain't nobody at the pool he's talking about uh so he gonna ask me someone where is everybody i was like probably on oh it's loud i said they probably on the rooftop and he talking about good because that mean i don't have to uh i don't have to lock nobody up tonight but girl okay y'all so let's see if it's if it's anyone on the rooftop we're gonna walk up there and see what's going on Y'all, is my wig? Let me see. Maybe we need to fix this wig, girl. Hold on. Let me let me try to fix this wig real quick. And then we're gonna go up there. Let me see. You know what? It don't look too bad. Oh, maybe it's just that little side right there. You know what? I don't think we're gonna fix the wig, but you know what I think we're gonna do? Yeah, because it don't look too bad. I think instead of fixing a wig. We gonna put on some eyebrows. That's what we gonna do. Y'all like my little cute outfit, girls? Y'all, isn't this cute? Y'all, the firefighter, um, he saved us in the fire. I ain't gonna lie, girl. He saved a lot of my cute stuff in the fire. I was very, very happy. But this was one of the things that he was able to grab. And it's so, oh, and by the way, I never, I've never worn this, y'all. I, I bought this little cute outfit during the pandemic, girl. Look at this. Girl, this thing act like it don't want to open. Hold on, let me throw this stuff away. I freaking love, love, love this darn, um, love this camera. Absolutely one of the best purchases I have ever made. Okay. Y'all, I watched Queenie. I need to finish watching that, but girl, Queenie uh, is a, it's a show on Hulu. And girl, y'all, Queenie, girl, she be doing some sex, girl. Queenie, the, Queenie don't be playing about being down to the bed, girl. Baby, she be down to the bed with a lot of men, girl. I was like, ooh. And then she went to the doctor. Girl, why the doctor asked her if she was in a, <laughs> 
why did the doctor ask her if she was in a uh how should i say this in a volatile relationship we just gonna say it like that but basically because uh when a doctor when her gynecologist checked her i guess uh it was so beat up down there her hello kitty head looked like it had been in a fight with uh floyd mayweather girl <laughs> that's how much sex she was doing hold on y'all we just going to the rooftop it's just gonna be a cute little one too we don't need to do too too much but i just be needing my little eyebrows see y'all it make a world of difference and then this little lace right here oh girl not the nails peeling and looking crazy as hell oh Okay, that's better. I just kind of wanted to like, hey, hey, hey. Okay, fix that little part right there. All right. Okay, that's better. And baby, this is this all I gotta give today. I normally be having a lot more to give, but it's the fourth, and I think my outfit is making up for the fact that I don't have much to give. <laughs> too much to give on this makeup today baby all right y'all so we're up here look like it's some little kids up here girl baby but i don't girl not not them organ i told y'all this must be the weekend for kids to be like just i don't know acting crazy but anyway okay i don't see anything i hear a lot of stuff but i see nothing so we're gonna see when i get a little bit closer uh-uh uh-uh Girl, not them jumping up and down. All right, let me see. What? Stop, it's shaking. Girl, not him talking about the sky shaking. What? I'm done. Y'all, I don't see. Girl, the camera's so close. Wow! Yeah, I thought she was vlogging. Girl, not them being nosy. Y'all hear them talking about she's vlogging. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so it's not y'all. I can't see. Maybe we need to go downstairs. I can't see anything. Hold on, let me turn it around. All right, y'all. I'm gonna probably go downstairs. If anything eventful happens, you know I'm gonna call y'all back. What you doing? Where you at? Oh, you complain? Don't say that. Sipping wine in a row. I look too good to be alone. My house clean. Hope on. Just say. We should be dancing. crispy clunchity fries so these last let me see here when is the last time I talked to you girls uh I think on the 4th of July is the last time I talked to y'all oh today is July the 6th and I don't know why guys but for whatever reason on July the 4th I just felt so sad and I don't even I can't even put my finger on it but I just felt really really sad or whatever so I just needed I was just like dude like what is triggering me I couldn't really put my finger on what was triggering me or whatever so but I'm feeling better now so 
I don't know why I just was like feeling like oh but anyway girl so y'all I have been over here watching um y'all know I watch Queenie I also watched um the other black girl in fact I'm gonna go back and watch um probably re-watch it because at some point I fell asleep but y'all it's so good both of these shows are on Hulu well girl if we could just talk about Queenie I mentioned it earlier in the vlog but Y'all, Queenie was doing so much sex. I, Y'all, I'm going to be honest. I still cannot believe all of the sex that girl was doing. <laughs> so, anyway, I think I know it's just a TV show, but I just felt like, like as I watched it more, I don't want to give away the whole plot because I actually want you y'all to watch it. I was like, she's trying to fill some type of void. But, um... Y'all, she was just doing way too much. And it was the, it was amazing, like, how people were, they were showing her grace, okay? So, the, her manager at work was showing her grace. Her manager at work gave her some great advice. You know, the advice was pretty much like, while you have two feet in the air, make sure you keep one on the ground. Like, her manager knew that she was, you know, frolicking or whatever, and she was just trying to save her. Unfortunately, she just... I just feel like she was at a downward spiral. Now, what I will need to do is probably go back and watch the last two episodes. But I think it's just like, maybe that she was kind of, I don't know. I think maybe after she broke up with that dude, she was going on a theory of, um, possible in, in order to get, hold on, let me turn this down. In order to get over one guy, you got to get, to get, I think, to get over one guy, you got to get under another one. That is the worst fucking advice. If anybody tells y'all that, run. When I, now, I don't agree with the way that she was moving. It's like having all of those different men, like being sexual with all of those different men. That shit is just dangerous. I'm not judging, but that's, that's not good. That's, that's, y'all, that's not good. But what I will say is this to all of my girlies that are, getting ready to get back out there and start dating and my divorced bombshells that are new on the dating scene I think the best advice I could give you that I wish that I would have taken when I was dating was like date multiple guys now that doesn't mean sleeping with those guys but you gotta date like if you're gonna date date you gotta stick your pole in multiple holes and I'm not telling y'all to let a lot of poles stick it in yo ho <laughs> pun intended i'm just saying if you're gonna date date that has always been something that i've struggled with not really knowing how to date multiple people i've never been good at that like i would just have to like focus on one person at a time um and if you're just dating i don't think that that's good i think that there if there is no commitment there is no talk of commitment you really need to just go out and date different guys and see what the experiences is the experiences are going to be like see who is going to be you know the best person for you you know um i just think that's the best way to do it because it's like when you date one person at a time you get really enamored with this one person and then things don't work out and then you have to start over and then let me say this i used to have a friend y'all she hated she was like she didn't like going on dates and I'm like, okay, I know you don't like going on dates, but you need to, it is so important that you at least go on dates. And I was asking her, I was like, well, if you don't like going on dates, like how do you go through the process of dating? And she was saying like, she'll go over the guy's house and he'll come over her house. And you know, that would be their way of getting to know each other. But in terms of just getting dressed, going to get dinner and stuff, she just did not enjoy doing that. And then later down the line, she was complaining because, you know, these things would not work out. And then she would see the guy or on social media or whatever, and he would be actively taking someone else out and doing things with them. And what I had to explain to her, I was like, but I was like, I don't think it's just that, I don't think it's that he didn't want to take you out and do things with you. Are these guys didn't want to take you and do things with you? I think that they just thought like you wanting to be home was your thing. And because you never said anything and you kind of did say that you didn't like dating, they never took you places because that's just probably not something that you required. And so 
I think it's so important that you do go through the dating process. Like go on dates, go to museums, go to wine tastings, go to dinner, do things because y'all get to, you get to see how this person interacts with other people. You get to see if he's going to be kind to the waitress, kind to the waiter, you know, and then too, like what happens if he's not a kind person? You probably not going to want to be with a rude guy. You know, it's so many different things. It's not even about like, oh, I'm going to go eat up a whole bunch of food. That's not what it's about. But you still get to see this person in a different environment. And then too, I, I don't, all of them like getting to know people and coming over their house and they, you going over their house and them coming over your house in the beginning stages. I don't believe in that shit because what if you don't like this fool? Then he didn't been over your house. Uh-uh, I just don't, I don't believe in that. You know what I'm saying? Then what if he be popping up and shit? No, ma'am. So that's just my take on the dating thing. But in the, in the series, Queenie wasn't, I don't think she, her thing wasn't to get out there and date. Her thing was to get out there and get a whole bunch of poles dipping in her hole. That's what her, <laughs> that's what her whole MO was. But anyway, so yeah, it's, it's really tricky out here, girls. I say, I be telling y'all, like, date yourself. If you date yourself and you know what you like, somebody else come along, it's never going to be a situation of you just dating this dude so he can take you to dinner. Shit, you can afford to take yourself to dinner. You know what I'm saying? So that way, when you go out, there is already a standard setting. You set that standard for yourself. Just my take on it. But anyway, I need to go check on these crispity, crunchity fries. Oh, you know what? Before we go check on the fries, girls, Y'all also need to watch Diane Von Thurstenberg. That's who, I tried to do my hair like hers today. So Diane Von Thurstenberg, she is the creator of the wrap dress. And baby, when I tell you she was also humping around and doing a whole lot of sex and Diane, her theory is if men can do it, she could do it or whatever. So anyway, let me go check on these fries and I'm gonna call y'all back. Y'all, these are the fries. So I just made them with some olive oil, parsley, uh, what's the name of that other thing? Garlic, onions, and uh, chives. And that's it. I didn't want to put all of that, girl, all that Tony Saturies and all of that on there because they've been, I have been a little heavy handed lately with the sodium and I was like, oh, you know, just seizing salt overall. And I just did not want all of that today. And then I'll just have a little bit of ketchup right here. And girl, that is it. But I think after I eat this, I think after I eat this, I'm gonna probably chill for the night. We're supposed to be getting some really bad rain outside. I've been keeping up with the stuff at the Essence Festival, girl. Girl, why they got a hashtag? Hashtag surviving the essence fest. So they just basically out there saying like, you know, it's not like it used to be, but I haven't been in a thousand years. I have not been to the essence fest in so long. But anyway, so people are kind of on TikTok giving a commentary. They really chewing a uh, bird man. <laughs> They chewing Birdman up. They talking about the um, Young Money performance and stuff like that. Drake didn't show up and Lil Wayne didn't perform with them and just a, a, a bunch of whole, a, a whole bunch of stuff going on or whatever. And so also it rained out there. So they were talking about that. But the thing that I've seen people complain about the most is like, oh, every year we're used to getting free stuff. We didn't get free stuff this year. And I don't know. I was just like, oh, my God. But um, so they're saying that has that contributes a lot to why they're not having a great experience. But anyway, y'all, let me eat my fries and um, I'm probably going to get comfortable. Take this wig off because it's not giving the way I wanted it to. And then we're going to chill and just, you know, watch some movies and stuff. But I'll call y'all back. Let's turn the lights on. You're the kind of love I think I fall for. A flawless garden with no ego I'm your cup of coffee, you be my sweet and low hey. You a different babe on a different way I know what you want 
girls it has been raining like this all weekend and i have cabin fever guys um so the weather has been pretty bad some of you girls wanted an episode of down to the pool <laughs> where uh i oh oh Oh, not the Thunder Girl, where I show you guys what's happening. Well, this is the first official down to the pool where I'm actually showing you girls a down to the pool. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing is happening. Because <sighs> it's raining. And y'all, I am freaking over it. It's been like this the last couple of days. So I just kind of feel like I am homebound. So um, we had something really fun scheduled today but the rain came down and this is another problem in Houston when um we look at the weather you can never trust that here like it'll say that it's gonna rain but that doesn't mean it's gonna rain you know what I'm saying and so that's just how it is um so I kind of looked at the weather but I just didn't take it seriously you know what I mean and then uh I was getting dressed took a shower washed my hair and then I heard rain, it got super dark, and this is what we have. So anyway, I guess we're going to just try to find some stuff to do around the house. All right, y'all. So we are watching The Man with a Thousand Kids, and this is on Netflix. And baby, when I tell you, this guy is so sinister going around and basically acting as a donor but he was a serial donor y'all he was lying to all of these women and it's just the way that he did it was sinister and so they have an expert on here i think he's like a um embryologist or something like that um i i don't exactly know the professional name but he was just explaining like the dangers of having a lot of kids and he was saying like when you because this man was going around getting all of these women pregnant if the kids happen to meet um basically uh they could end up being in relationships because when you meet people who have like similar uh physical features and stuff like that people are naturally attracted to people that look similar to them and I was like wow and so he was saying like and because they're genetically related he was also explaining that um genetically you feel a connection with someone and not understanding that it's the connection is because of the genetics and you mistake that for love and so that was what they were trying to stop or whatever from him you know having all of these kids and girl one lady she enrolled her daughter into school and she noticed that it was another little girl that looked just like her daughter. And then it was another kid at another school that looked just like them and so on and so forth. Girl, come to find out this man fathered all of these kids. And the problem was he had already exceeded his ability to uh, give his, you know, donation, if you will, to the clinics. So what he was doing is going, he was a private donor. And so he was going around and having kids with all of these different women and they would just, some of them he would have uh, sex with and then some of them he would just give them, you know, the uh, the seed, if you will, so they could just, um, you know, insert it or whatever. And so I was just like, wow. So anyway, girl, it's so interesting, y'all. I tried to start, I was kind of watching it last night. I got through the first episode, but I'm about to watch episode one and two, and then I'll come back in and give you guys an update. Okay, y'all, I need to correct something that I said. So what happened was they all joined a Facebook group. And when they, like all of the parents, joined a Facebook group and found out that all of these kids were... Uh, from the same donor so they decided to have like a, you know like a kids meetup day so they brought all of these kids um and so one little girl she was 10 or 11 i think and um she was telling her mom like oh i really like him and the mom was like no like that's your half brother you can't like you can't that's not okay 
And so what the mom was explaining is that when kids who don't grow up together who are but are related they sometimes find an attraction with each other because they see similarities in their face or whatever so i guess when i was trying to watch this last night i was half asleep but that's really so i thought the specialist was saying that but that's not it was the uh it was the mom let me see a couple of months later we organized the siblings day and then it became very real My daughter knows a lot of brothers and she really liked one of them. Because they have the same interests, they have the same humor, they have the same little silly things. So they really connect. And my daughter was saying, hey, I like, I really like him. I was like, well, that's not an option. He's your half brother. But I really, really like him. Maybe I'm in love with him. That's a big problem, and she was only 10 or 11. These connections with the children are instant. It's so weird to see. They call it the Luke and Leah complex because of the movie Star Wars. Children who haven't been brought up together are more likely to get attracted to each other because they see some familiarities in the face of the, uh, of the sibling. So y'all, we're getting ready to I need to take a picture with this outfit on girl y'all this has been such a lazy vlog this weather y'all we getting ready for a hurricane hurricane um barrel and so the weather has sucked pretty much it hasn't been anything going on the fourth of july hit on a thursday i guess everyone had to go back to work on a friday and so it's just it really hasn't been anything i put my cute wig on that other wig yesterday was it was it was too tight it was taking me out but anyway so girls i'm gonna refresh my curls with this uh creatine repair i got this this is like a leave-in conditioner um i got this from ross girls i bought this for three dollars baby baby if you guys have a curly unit and you really want to bring it back to life, you need to get some of this. Look how thick this is. Look how thick that is. So I love this. And it just makes it, it makes it smell so freaking good. And then it just gives it, look at that pretty shine it gives it. So I'm just adding this in. And then I'm just going to like, let me just kind of put it through and then squeeze it. So yes, girly, I'm going to take a picture. I put this cute little outfit back on. I'm going to take a picture in this for the thumbnail. And then, girl, we're going to get us a sandwich. Um, I do have some, uh, I do have some, some fish and stuff, but I don't feel like cooking. You know, I'm just, I'm just not in the mood. So I want to finally try Jersey Mike's. I've been talking about going there, but I just hadn't gotten around to it. So it's one right down the street. So we're going to go there and get us a sandwich like uh what brother man say <laughs> sandwiches so <laughs> that's what we're gonna do oh y'all baby look at that oh baby y'all can't tell me oh baby wait till i get my money right oh but anyway baby you can't tell me nothing is you saying something? Oh, baby. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, this is this is the magic touch right here. Girl, because for a minute, the wig was acting like it did not want to curl. Oh, and then I got to find my, um, well, I don't have to find it. I got to go get my nude lipstick out of my purse. Y'all, I hate my lips. This is like the natural color of my lips is pink, red color. I freaking hate it. <laughs> I hate the natural color of my lips. I just, they look so, and then they be looking extra red on camera. Like, <laughs> it be looking like I have on red lipstick, girl. I can't stand it. So, okay. Oh, that looks so cutie. I freaking love it. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to take our picture. And then I'm probably just gonna throw on like a little jacket over this because this thing is super freaking cropped but anyway girls 
let me go get uh let me go get my lipstick i mean my my nude lip gloss i'll be right back all right y'all so i wear this one we're actually almost out of this one guys this is the hangover um and this one is by Too faced hangover pillow balm i love this it's such a pretty nude color and then i'll typically put the where is this from i think this is the essence i think from ulta beauty and this is a nude color unfortunately y'all i didn't use this thing up so much the color is not even on here anymore hold on let me see girl it's called purple rain but ain't nothing purple about this this is a really cute nude color that's perfect yes baby cover them lips up cover that baby cover them red lips up but anyway girls y'all so i was over here watching my girl y'all know that i love christy danielle i was over here watching her and she was talking about in her blog her work pet peeves like you know and she was saying like one of her pet peeves is people standing over her and i'm like that was one of my pet peeves at work but i think one of my pet peeves it's not it's not so much as like the work part it's the part of like on Sunday, I just hate the fact of like all of my corporate girlies and all of my girlies that work Monday through Friday. It just feels like at Sunday, you got to stop what you are doing. And it's like, yo, you don't even really get a whole weekend off. If you really think about it, when you get off at work on Friday, so Friday, you get off at five. You're probably really tired from working. So you probably, you might do something Friday night, might maybe a cute little happy hour. Um, and then you go home Saturday, you're kind of spending your entire Saturday cleaning and doing all of the stuff that you should have did or that you didn't have time to do during the week, going to the bank, cleaning, getting the car wash, whatever. Sunday, you get up, you go to church. Um, and if you don't go to church, you're probably doing some type of praise and worship. You're doing a reset, all the cleaning and the washing that didn't get done Saturday. You doing it on Sunday. And then, um... You know, by five o'clock, even if you wanted to like go out, like go to a little poetry thing or a little jazz thing in Houston, girls, that stuff, those jazz things and poetry things, that stuff don't really start until like seven o'clock here. So you can't even enjoy that because by five, you're getting dressed. I mean, not dressed. You're getting your clothes laid out, your, your meal prepping, cooking and stuff and getting ready for the week. So really, the you really, if you think about it, you really only had off that full Saturday, so that's one day, and then Friday from five until whatever, and then Sunday from the time you get up to five. So I just feel like you don't really get a full weekend off, you know? So that's my my biggest pet peeve, and that's one of the things that I freaking hated, because it's like, dude, Sunday, I would freaking hate when Sunday would get here, because it would be like, damn, I got to stop what I'm doing and get ready to go back to this damn hell hole. But anyway, so yeah, I hate that. Okay, I'm just trying to, y'all, I'm just trying to squeeze this little part right here so we can get that to kind of curl up. But guys, listen, let me tell y'all a little secret. Listen, girls, whatever does not curl and does not form into a wave when we get the picture, I am going to uh, Photoshop some waves into my hair. So even though I want it to be perfect so I don't have to do that, I'm going to just uh, <laughs> Photoshop the waves in there. You hear me? Attention, we are about to pivot. But anyway, so pivoting back, going back um, to Christy's blog, like, girls, this is to all my content creators, girls, get you like a list of girlies that gets you motivated. You know what I'm saying? Like get you a list of girlies that when you see them posting, it makes you want to get up and get motivated because I was just like, I had fell asleep after I finished watching that documentary about that man with all them cheerings, girl. But anyway, and then when I woke up, I saw that she had posted her blog and y'all that made me want to get up and get motivated and you know, finish this vlog out but I think for me I just kept feeling like dude like I didn't do anything and, and it's like but that's okay like that's okay you know what I'm saying um 
I still think that, you know, oh, this look, y'all, this looks so pretty. Oh my God. But the bottom line is, girls, this is real life. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, is real life. And I don't know why I just constantly be like, I didn't do anything because y'all, girls, YouTube has already uploaded the playlist, the soft life playlist that's been uploaded and girls when i tell y'all we're getting so many new bombshells oh my gosh um i'm so excited about that so i just want to take this time to welcome in all of the new bombshells girls i think we might have gotten 150 bombshells in the last couple of days the playlist just went live a few days ago and the playlist will be available until september the 12th or the 17th or something like that let me go in here really quickly and take this picture for the thumbnail and then uh, i'm gonna grab some shoes yeah, some shoes because I'm probably just going to take the thumbnail with our shoes. I'm going to grab some shoes and then we're going to get in the car and go get us a yummy, delicious sandwich. Yeah, I just feel like when we, uh, you know, when I'm talking in the car, the microphone is so much better because you can't, you can't hear all, you know, the AC and stuff like that. Y'all know I got to concentrate. Hold on. Let me see. I need a moment of silence. Oh Lord, not everybody be at home and I'm having trouble backing out. Okay, hold on y'all, be quiet so I can concentrate. Oh my God, I hate this. I hate this. So, okay, they look like this gonna be. All right, let me see. All right. Ooh, that girl. Ooh, that girl getting cold, baby. That girl getting cold behind that stern wheel. Okay. So anyway, girls, y'all know something else that I was thinking about. Um, let me see which way do we want to go. I think we'll go. Oh shit. Oh lord, y'all. That car. <laughs> y'all. That car scared me. Jeez, Louise, girl. Oh, girl, I didn't expect to see that car right there. But anyway, so y'all know what else I was thinking about when we talk about, like, the worst dating advice? Y'all, I always like to sweep around my own front door and talk about the stupid shit that I used to do. You know what I'm saying? Let me turn this AC back on, girl. That car scared me, girl. Got my, got my blood pressure high, girl. It ran my sugar up real quick. Hold on. Let me turn the AC on. Oh Lord, I don't even know. Anyway, why they caught why my nerves so bad? I guess I just didn't expect anyone to be there. But anyway, so anyway, girls, some of the stupid things that I used to do, because I like to also partake in, a, you know, I like to um, take responsibility of the uh, BS that I was on as well. So one of the things that I used to do, girl, I would be so freaking mean to like the guys that I would give my number and it was only a test because I'm not I'm not a mean person I'm very very like kind and nurturing and so uh I'm not I wouldn't say I'm nice to a fault because I don't feel that I am but I am very kind I'm very nice but I would intentionally be mean super mean to them just to see you know what I'm saying like if I be mean to him is he gonna stick around you know and that's that's never a good thing you know what I'm saying so I would do that another thing that I would do is be an intentional uh, what they call a cold fish and a cold fish is someone that's like they won't call you uh-uh baby you need to get uh-uh you need to get from behind me Y'all, it's only me and one person on the road and they behind me. Girl, okay, they on the other side. But anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I do be being nice except for when I be driving. Okay, so anyway. Don't get me wrong, like I know how to I know how to flex and I know how to I'm kind of, I'm kind of backtracking a little bit. Let me just go back and say this. I know how to flex and I know how to stunt uh when i need to you know what i'm saying like i'm not no guy i'm not no pushover 
you're not gonna push me over anything but I also know how to pick my battles but I would intentionally be mean to guys and the bottom line is no one I don't care how much a person like you ain't nobody gonna hang around for that ain't nobody is gonna hang around for you to just intentionally mistreat them okay so the next thing I would do like I was saying I would um, be a cold fish and a cold fish is someone who they they not gonna call you they not gonna text you they not gonna put out and they gonna make you do all of the work that was me um I still you're like when I meet guys I still do that because I just I'm not really good at calling because I don't always for me I'm being on feeling safe and not just physically safe but also emotionally safe and if I don't feel emotionally safe with you, I won't, it takes, it takes a lot of, it takes time for me to build up to that. And so, because I don't feel that safety there, I won't call. I'll just have the guy do all of the calling and stuff like that until I start to feel more safe or whatever. And that's something I'm still working on to this day, to this day. To this day um what else what else did i used to do that whole if you can't take me at my worst i ain't gonna you can't have me at my best that whole thing i was like a firm believer of that when the bottom line is you should always put your best foot forward and that's kind of how i move now like if i meet someone if i'm interested i put my best foot forward and then if i feel that i have to stop i'm just not gonna deal with you I think the things that turn me off from men are pretty reasonable things like not being a man of your word, not being consistent, those types of things. Um, I'm, I feel that I'm very consistent. I'm a woman of my word. I take my word very seriously because that's all I have. And if I say I'm going to call you back, I'm going to do something in terms of dating, I really am going to do it. And if I can't get that from you, I'm not going to hold your feet to the flame. I'm not going to do any of that, but I am going to back up. You know what I'm saying? I'm a scooch back and then I'm going to fall off. I'm going to fall back and then I'm going to fall off. So, yeah. But, yeah, so I used to, those are just to me some of the things that I would do in the initial stages of dating. And then as time, you know, progressed, I think it's just a maturity thing. And, um, you know, I, and then y'all, I like, what's that noise? I hear, I hear her song. But anyway, y'all, I like being nice. Like, I, I like that. I enjoy being nice. Like, when I'm dating someone, I like planning, like, fun little surprises and stuff. I really do. It's, I just enjoy that. It brings out the best in me. And I want to be, I want to be with guys that bring uh, people, just not just guys, not just relationship stuff. I just want to be around people that absolutely positively bring out the best in me. And if I can't, you know be around people like that then i'm just not gonna be around you know what i'm saying oh y'all know what else i used to do i used to use like longevity that's another thing i have and this is terrible y'all don't do this i used to use like the length of the relationship as a uh, uh, as a reason to justify why oh 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 not me hitting the curb why me and the person should still be together and y'all that's never a good reason as to why you and someone should still be together because of how long y'all dated you know so it's like i know as women we'd be like but well, we've been together for three years and all of this kind of stuff so freaking what you know what i'm saying that is not enough to that's not a reason to stay in a freaking awful relationship you know and i used to do that and I will never freaking do that again. I don't give a damn if it's been two days, two weeks, two hours, two years, or two decades. If if I'm not being treated the way that I deserve, I'm out. I am not about to stay around. Okay, hold on, girls. Because, baby, it looked like a lot of companies and clothes, a little strip center. Uh-uh, uh baby, don't be trying to come over here. Yeah. See, y'all, I be, y'all, I be being nice until I drive. Y'all, I think I'm going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> y'all i think i'm gonna stop um i think when i drive i'm just not gonna vlog because it be making me seem like i'm like sassy it do like when i drive it just be making me seem like i'm real sassy and stuff <laughs> okay girls let's go in jersey mike oh you know what i need to do let's look at the menu first
eating fat and sassy, baby. We put the onions on the grill. So she is grilling the onions. She's grilling the roast beef. She's grilling the turkey. Ooh, y'all look at that sandwich, baby. Y'all, why y'all? Girl, it's a big back behavior for me. It's me being all excited about eating, but y'all, I didn't pretty much slept the day away. So the only thing I've eaten today, I had some coffee, I had some grits. And so I'm pretty excited about this or whatever. Y'all, it looks so good. Oh my God. Okay, y'all, let me finish with our order and I'll call y'all when we, I don't know, maybe I'll give you guys a call when we get home. Okay, all right girls, finally home. I stopped at Trader Joe's. I just got some of the corn puff things that I like. And of course, our yummy, delicious sandwich. So girls, we were gonna have a bed picnic, but I just couldn't bring myself to doing it because I don't want my bedroom smelling like Jersey Mike's. But anyway, so this is um, roast beef. It's like, it's called a super club. So it has roast beef, ham, turkey, bacon, um, and all of the oil and stuff. So yeah, let me try it. Mm. Mm. That's pretty good. This is what it looks like. I have them grill the onions. Her, her, her. Get you some. Let me take my bite. Mm. I'm trying to figure out what that little construction paper taste is but that must be the bacon but i think i just have to get used to it but overall it's a good sandwich i thought it was going to be a lot more like vinegary pickly or i don't know i thought it was going to be a lot more something but it's okay it's you know it's not like a terrible sandwich i just thought it was gonna y'all know how subway sandwich had it like pickly vinegar type of situation going on I thought it would have been like that, but that's okay because we can always add like some olives to it or whatever. But anyway, girls, let me finish eating this and I'll give you guys a call back. Never seen the sun shine like this. Never seen the moon glow like this Never seen the waterfalls like this Never seen the lights off like this Never dug anyone like this Never had tasty lips to kiss Never asked someone to rest Never sang a song quite like this 